this is it, raft day at our drill program. I'm bringing you along for a ride. We're doing a full tour of everything going on right now. Busy site, lots of fun. Here we go. I got the last bit of core. This is box of chocolates now. On the table right now is our last drill hole. This is KLD 2537. This one was on Mike's hunch to flip the drill. 180, go the other way. Expanding the, the envelope, um, I turned the drill around and did a steep hole. And so instead of going south, which almost all the other holes have done, this one's going north. What's exciting and a little frustrating about this hole is the last three meters. So I'm gonna get you to come in a little bit closer here so we can take a look at this. So this last three meters, there's one cardinal rule in drilling and it's you never end the hole in mineralization. This hole ended in mineralization. However, we did leave the casing in this so we can test it at a future date and see how far that keeps going. But this is the deepest mineralization we've had on this program is to 102 meters, which is exciting. It's very positive. Okay, Mike, we're talking about visuals within the core and that's, you know, we haven't done any assays yet. They're coming, they just take time as always. But you've talked about sphalerite and calcopyrite and pyrite. Can we, can we look at those so that you know everyone watching can understand the difference between those? Okay, so your sphalerite, and this is more or less like a, like it's a band of sulfides, but your sphalerite is a, like a reddish brown color in there. And you know, obviously that's fairly massive, very visible. And that's associated with? That's your zinc. Zinc? Mm hmm Your zinc sulfide, and you have a pyrite, which is a browny, brassy looking uh, sulfide. Uh, and then when you get the yellowy, brassy sort of sulfide, that's your, that's your calcopyrite. And uh, you can see the calcopyrite in through there. What a beautiful piece. That is nice. You can see the difference between pyrite and calcopyrite in here because... Yeah, crystal clear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's massive sulfides. Pyrite, calcopyrite, you know, I'm sure there's... And that's the... Uh, right here. That's the magnetite. And this is massive magnetite. Over here we have the samples that are going to be going to the lab. We'll get them out there so we can see exactly what's uh, in those rocks. All right, we had 34, 35, and 36. These ones were all basically from the same pad, but they just, they fanned. And so we went in three different angles from the same spot. And the whole point of that was to trace down that mineralization we saw in the first hole. We see this across a lot of different holes where we're having these disseminated, the disseminated sulfides and then this fluid going through these rocks. And so the assays are really gonna show if this is of a meaningful amount or if we just need to find that trunk of the tree where the intrusion fluids came from. But that's kind of an example of what we're, what we're working with on hole 34. 35 is the same. 36, which is in the shack, is the same. Those were all to test the mineralization uh, right at the Winnie shaft. So 30. The reason why we did 30 was to test the mineralization between Mini Winnie and Winnie. So we did run into some sulfides here. The initial hole, it basically collared in the cyanide. So that was 29. 30, we ended up flipping around and going the opposite direction. And the whole point of that was to catch that contact because we know that's where it seems all those fluids are escaping from the intrusion and going along that border. And that's what's cooking the rock and dropping off that mineralization. And then 31 was testing that mag low. 
Now this hole is most intriguing to me because it's gonna be an assay only kind of truth tell. And so what you'll see on all of these is this altered cyanide. So you can see this one over here is less altered and then you get more alteration, a little bit less, more, less, more, 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 more. And that kind of continues throughout this hole. You can see this one, this is box 57, lots of alteration here. So what we see throughout this hole is these, these sulfide veins, and you can see this right here, these sulfides that are in this, this matrix, right? This, this brecciated core. And so we know that there are sulfides in the fluids. It's just a matter of if they run with this one, but we have a big hole. There's over 80 boxes that have that alternating quartz vein, altered cyanite, basically from top to bottom. We, we, the only way we're gonna tell, again, is with those assays, but it's a really fun, uh, interesting hole, and I, I can't wait to see what it returns. This was our first test of the contact. You can see they're, they're slightly altered. There is some quartz veining in them, but not the contact that we were hoping for. Still definitely a hypothesis for us. We just, we didn't get this hole in the right place, which happens sometimes. But the fact that we still see alteration, the fact that we still see quartz veining is a really good sign on these holes as well. It's just a matter of doing a little bit more work to fine tune exactly where we need to go with them. That pretty much sums up the entire drill program. Like I said, this is the most exciting holes that I've seen come out of the ground. Drake thinks it's the most exciting hole. Mike thinks it's the most exciting hole. I think we're onto something big here, so stay tuned for those assays and come along for the ride. sample of the drilling program is going to run stuff big time and then we're gonna to have to come back <laughs> oh shucks we're gonna to have to come back mike <laughs>